Three, two, one. <laughs> Bloopers already. Yay! <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? Hi. And as you can see here, I have a little guest here. Yay! This is my girlfriend Naomi. Hello. I finally made it to the U.S. <laughs> Four thousand miles away. Give or take. <laughs> Honestly, the plane was not nice, and it got delayed. And I just wanted to be with this one. It was a bit of a interesting predicament. <laughs> Alright, so you're probably wondering what we're doing here. Uh, so basically, since it's around that time of year for many reviewers, we decided let's do what everybody else does. Year-end videos. Yay! Since I have never really done one before, well, I thought I'd bring in this one because she's done it before and, well, we have an interesting kind of thing going on. Well, I also work as a music journalist, so I've been having to think about my best and worst of the year already. But we're taking an interesting discussion into this one, this list of Yeah, we actually discussed, let's talk about the albums that, you know, kind of disappointed us. Like, the ones that we were excited for, but didn't really live up to expectation, or just disappointed us in general. Just... Like, they had the big hype, and then when it came to, like, having this glorious thing, all that came out was... Exactly. So basically, we've picked out five albums that we've listened to this year, and pretty much... We're just gonna go one by one and discuss like what they are and how we feel. And this isn't gonna be in any particular order or anything, we're just tossing out names and stuff like that. So like I've got a list here. Bear in mind this is all our opinion. Now don't go writing Oh my in the god, calm down people. Don't go writing in the comments basically like, oh my gosh, you hated this, you're a whore. Cause come on guys. You got better things to do in your life than to write hate comments. Let's be real. Yeah. Alright, without further ado, let us get started. I feel like ladies first. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, every time I've had a um, kid say that, it's been ladies first, men just before. Just get on with it! <laughs> okay! <laughs> so, my first one from this year was 30 Seconds to Mars, America. Um, actually representing my friend Luke here, who put this as number one uh, of his worst albums of the year. And, to be fair, he's not wrong. Um, I used to be a huge fan of 30 Seconds to Mars, I really loved that album A Beautiful Lie and I had also dipped into like some of the other tracks such as um, This Is War and um... There's also like yeah. Closer to the Edge and Kings yeah, and Queens. Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to think of the name for. <laughs> yeah, King, yeah, Kings and Queens was my first 30 Seconds to Mars song and I absolutely fell head over heels for the band at that point in time. So I'm definitely agreeing with her, like, when I first heard this album I thought, what is going on here? Is this just like... Well, the first, the thing is, I first heard the single "Water" and I was walk on water. Walk on water. See, it's 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 it's, it's stupid already. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I first heard that single and I was like really excited, and then I heard it and I was like, it's a bit blah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's there one minute, gone the next. And it didn't help that the rest of the album was very lazy. Like, it felt lazy in the musicianship, it felt lazy in the production, and it felt lazy in the lyrics. And if you get all those three incorrectly, you're in a bad, bad, bad time. Let's not forget that their guitarist also left two months after it came yeah, out. Yeah, so it's basically now, like, the Lesso Brothers now. So it's, like, even he got fed up of all this bullshittery. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, that's her pick, and now it's my turn. Alright, so this is a... Okay, so the first choice for me is a band that... Actually, I got into this year. Um, I like—I really did like it at first, but as time has gone on, it kind of fades away from memory at times. And that's uh, Godsmack's When Legends Rise. Now, earlier this year, I saw them at Carolina Rebellion, just out of pure curiosity. That, and I wanted to skip Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> we all want to skip Five Finger Death Punch, who are we hit? But, like, here's the thing. Like, I had gone in with, like, low expectations, because... I wasn't given many positive things about Godsmack. I'd always heard like, oh, Godsmack sucks, or da 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 but, Crying like a bitch, anybody? There's that. <laughs> but I saw their performance and I was blown away, so I decided, hey, why not? Let's check them out. And well, there's, well, some of Godsmack stuff is a bit dated in a couple places. The less we talk about whatever, the better. I'm actually that guy that prefers voodoo, for God's sake. <laughs> Let that tell you something! To be honest, I haven't really heard that much Godsmack, like from uh, Crying Like a Bitch. So, to be honest, I can't really say anything. 
Yeah, here's the thing. I don't. I haven't heard that much God smack, so I don't have an opinion. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> there yeah, yep, get back up. <laughs> get back up. Dang it. But the thing is, like, I heard uh, Bulletproof as the lead single, which I know some people are like, can we just play something else? But here's the thing. I am actually someone who enjoys it, because it's kind of catchy, admittingly. And When Legends Rise, the title track, is probably my favorite one. But aside from those two tracks, like, every other track either fades from memory or just... I don't know, I just don't remember it. It's a very blah album. And, and it sucks because I really did enjoy it a lot at first, and the more I listened to it, the more it just faded away. And that, and that really does suck because Godsmack is a really great live band, so... Yeah, it always sucks whenever you get see a band live and then they just don't replicate it when you actually listen to it on the record. It's DISAPPOINTING! To put it bluntly, Godsmack is more of a live band than a studio band. Let's just say that. Any negative opinion you may have on Godsmack, just go to a show of theirs, you'll change your mind. Believe me. It happened to me. Well, they need to come to the UK sometime then. Hey. <laughs> well, you keep complaining about Amaranth never coming to the US, so I get to complain about every other band never coming to the UK. Alright, you're up. What do you got? My next one. Ooh, it's a controversial one. Prepare your keyboards. Uh, <laughs> Let me just get mine from out of my bed. <laughs> So I always I always say the quote, um, paraphrase from the Dark Knight, you e with the relating to the emo trilogy, you either die, my chemical romance, or you live long enough long enough to see yourself become Fall Out Boy. And we all know how Fall Out Boy felt this year. But that's not my uh. pick. That's not my pick. Um, my pick is controversial, like I said, it's Panic at the Disco's Pray for the Wicked. Oh boy, oh man, listening to this. Because the thing is I have been a fan of Panic at the Disco. They're coming to Cardiff uh, in March. I'm hoping to catch them there. And I've been like a fan of all of their albums up to uh, Death of the Bachelor. Death of the Bachelor was like the first album review, like a first album I got and reviewed. And I was really excited for that because they, they basically swore to shake it up and we swore to listen. And you know, everything that they've, every album that they've put out has been great, 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 great. Until Pray for the Wicked, which I feel is just Death of a Bachelor reject. Let's put it frankly. <laughs> like the little scraps that were there, just left over. Pretty much. It's like the unused tracks, because like there was a producer that was like, yep, let's be a nope to this. Let's, let's actually take some criticism in ourselves and actually discuss this. Whilst on Pray for the Wicked, I feel like it was just full of yes men because of how much Death of a Bachelor was and because Fall Out Boy are, uh, no, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, Fall Out Boy suck! <laughs> uh, Panic at the Disco is cause just of Brendan Urie, and they have been like pretty much featured in the spotlight. I mean, they've had a few performances at award shows, they've done a performance on The Voice. They've even been on Jimmy Kimmel a yeah. couple times. Yeah, I mean, the fact that like, well, we say they, it's pretty much just well, the Brendan Urie show. Well, just Brendan. Let's <laughs> be the real Brendan here. Brendan show! <laughs> Let's be real here. And because of that, I feel like in a way, Brendan Urie's trying to emulate Frank Sinatra, which works for Death of a Bachelor, but for here, in Pray for the Wicked, it really, I really don't think it works for, I don't think it captures what the essence that Death of a Bachelor had, I don't feel like it has that kind of fun nature where you can just talk about anything, it's, and it had make no sense whatsoever. To me, it just felt like he wrote whatever he could, just put it with some random instruments to make it seem like kind of new jazz which unlike new metal doesn't all right suck there are exceptions though yeah there are exceptions um uh, i mean with the new jazz uh paper the wicked for example hey all right you're done <laughs> all right next up for me i think this is one we can definitely agree on and Colt, I know you're probably gonna watch this. I'm sorry, but I have to say it. Bullet for my Valentine's Gravity. Oh my gosh, was that a bad one. Ugh. Thing is, I work at two websites. I saw it come into the group page that we have, where we get to pick albums and be like, yeah, I'll review this. That came in, I was so excited. I was like, yeah, I'll do Bullet for my Valentine. It'll be fun. I mean, I'm going to Wales now, a Welsh band. It'll be fun. I listened to it, and you can imagine my immediate disappointment on track one. Yeah, um, 
Like, I can understand a band wanting to, like, experiment and try new things. But what they did was, as my friend Crash says, as I'm gonna put it right here. A beast I've begun calling the Imagine Dragon. Like, you see what I mean? Like, you see? Crash ain't wrong, man. Yeah, exactly. Nice person, by the way. Subscribe to him. Like the end of the script, yeah. Baby! We're not supporting <laughs> our friends! Ah! Ah! But yeah, like, every time I listen to this album, it just either just sat there and did nothing, or it just bored me. Like, but the thing is, the lead single for this album, which was released nearly two years before, is the song I have on repeat the most, Don't Need You. Yeah. And I love that song. Yeah, cause... Don't Need You is like an um, absolute banger, and I feel like that because you said it was released two years prior. Yeah, exactly. That was the one that they wrote, and then they were like, I have an idea, let's go and do all this shit with it. Because here's the thing, um, I read a lot of magazines like Rock Sound, Kerrang, Metal Hammer. Matt Tuck did an interview with um, Metal Hammer and basically says, this is our new direction, if you don't like it, go away. That's like, no, that's, that's not what you want to do. And like, I understand how like, an artist can get really pissy about like how Fans can react sometimes. Susie, sue anyone? Tee <laughs> Could you not? <laughs> and I mean, I can definitely understand where some artists can't get frustrated. Like, we're trying new things. We want to dip our toes into something. Like, it happens every now and then. I mean, I'm the one guy that kind of likes One More Light. Let's just say that right now. I mean, I own One More Light. I have it too. I mean, it's right over there in my CD case. So. I've seen One More Light being performed. That's for another day. But, yeah, where One More Light had some moments, this one doesn't. Just like one moment and then the rest of it is... <laughs> exactly. And then it's auto-tuned with electric, so it's like... <laughs> Colt's gonna kill me now! <laughs> I'm sorry! Alright, let's move on. Yay! Um... Well, I'm gonna get murdered by the skeleton clock now with 21 pilots! Oh man, what's this though? I'm gonna step away because I am not a 21 pilots fan and I really can't really contribute. <laughs> because you're probably gonna say the same thing I'm gonna say. I mean, I liked Blurry Face. Let me put that out there. I liked Blurry Face. I didn't. Yeah, well, you have your opinion, I have my own. Well, shush! <laughs> um. But I, I still have Blurry Face on repeat. I own the album, I listen to it on my iPod, and you know, there's some really good tracks on there, not just Stressed Out and that's it. I mean, you've got others like um, uh, the, uh, Heavy Dirty Soul at the beginning, and you also have Local. Um, Wasn't local there that one. also one, uh, one song called Heathens or something? Oh, that was for um, the Suicide Squad. That makes sense. It was for Suicide Squad, and funnily enough, with Jared Leto, as if he isn't a scrunch on this list already. Yay! But honestly, um, I was re again, like Panic at the Disco, I was really hyped up for this, especially since every magazine that I read was always like, Oh my gosh, it's pretty bad, it's pretty bad, it's pretty bad, it's pretty You know the, um, uh, Throw me at the mouth guy from the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. It was pretty much like that. Oh. <laughs> Just going. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> I also know a bunch of 21 Pilots fans that actually came to me and said, Oh, this is the album that's going to change your mind. You're going to be a fan after this. I listened to it and was like, it has nothing. I mean, at least with Blurry Face, I can get the themes and the character of Blurry Face. With this, with Trench, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, that's who the same is, thing. Who is Nico and the Niners? Nothing about that is explained. What the hell is this story? I, I just don't, I don't get it. It seems like a very pretentious move by Twilight Pilots, but just because they're in this kind of limelight, they're able to do whatever the fuck they want, and that shouldn't be the case. You, even if you're like a massive fan of them, you have to at least step in and be like, no, 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 no. I want you to evolve, but you can't just do everything you want willy nilly because it doesn't sound good. It sounds boring. Just let it be known. Just because they're an artist you like doesn't mean you have to like everything they do. I mean, Metallica is one of my all-time favorite bands, and I absolutely despise. 
and I'm the one that likes sand anger. So yeah, he's the he's the weird one. Let that tell you something. All right, my turn. All right, so oh boy, this is definitely gonna get some laughs out of people. Uh, <laughs> but let it be known, this is the band that actually made me want to start, you know, being a musician anyway, and that's why I have a bunch of this in my room, <laughs> and why. Just flicks me with your hair. And also why I have the hair. Which you fixed me with. Yes, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, the band is the new album, Veil, by Black Veil Brides. Oh, uh, I tried to start listening to this, and I was like, eh, eh, eh. The well, thing is, I, I saw Black Veil Brides early this year with Asking Alexandria when they came to Manchester. And... Yes! And all right, but none of the music really captures me. It, there's just nothing really that sticks to me when it comes to Black Veil Brides, so I can't really imagine how a full album of like new material would be able to stick on a wall. And I can understand like why some people aren't Black Veil Brides fans. Like I can understand that, but like to me they hold a special place because, like I mentioned, they're the reason I have like a drum set in my garage. I got a bass. I got guitars. I'm in a band now because of this. It's all because of them and like the material they put out. And I love everything they've done. Yes, even the self-titled. But this, to me, is their worst record. Like, I enjoy, like, the song My Vow and The Outsider, but that's it. Nothing else. It was just... Like, I enjoyed it upon first listen, but when I listened to it again, nothing really stuck to me, which was really weird. So... Yeah... So kind of sucks, but... Uh, Andy Beersack was basically like, chuck things at the wall to see what sticks, and nothing stuck. Andy, I love you, but... sorry. We prefer American sex, thank you very much. I mean, there you go. Okay, That's so... so oh, technically, since Bullet was a two-for-one, uh, yeah, she gets, uh, to go, uh, like, with another album, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh... So this one uh, was another one that I was able to get sent to me from the lovely people at Noise Cartel. Hi, how you doing? And um, it was Jonathan Davis's Black Labyrinth. Now, if you go back to my review when I first had it, like early this year, yeah, I was really, I really did love it. I mean, what it is is still a good track in my opinion. However, nothing like Black Labyrinth, nothing has stuck. And it's a shame because I absolutely adore Korn and I love their sound and their style and I think Jonathan Davis has one of the best voices and musical talent in music. I'm not saying by any means that this is a terrible album. Like it says in the title, it's disappointing, not bad. We'll get to worse um, individually soon. Yes. Um, but again, this was an album that I did like and I still like it's just I for some reason I've never found the motivation to be able to want to go back and listen and I think that's one album should always capture that your desire to listen to it again like you want to have this um, like album go on repeat and repeat and repeat until you wear out the vinyl essentially we yeah because that's just what an album does for you even the EPs and stuff like that you want to listen to it over and over again but if an album is placed in front of you and you only want and you only spend it that one time then... Essentially, it's a waste of money, especially yeah, exactly. if you buy it on vinyl. It's usually like a waste of like maybe five bucks or ten dollars, twenty dollars, something like that. Depends on what you get it on and how much you pay for it. It just feels Where like Where in the world you get it? <laughs> it basically feels like you wasted your time. And nobody wants that. I mean, again, I'm not saying this is a bad album, because it is. And it deserves at least one lesson. So if you want to listen to it, I definitely say go for it because it will be an experience you won't forget. But I'm not saying put all your eggs into one basket with this album. Just give it a little room. It might be good for you, it might not. It might have you wanting to listen to more and more and more over and over again, it might not. But it's not going to be the same as Korn's usual repertoire. It is Jonathan Davis on his own. So just keep that, that in mind. So yeah, don't take it too personally or anything. Oh, Oopsie, stay, what do you have? The comment section's gonna be weird in this one. I can already see a bad one right down there. Oh, what's that? Oh, look at that, you piece of shit. Dang it. Alright, moving on. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, uh, so this next one, uh... Funny thing, these guys, back in 2015, were my album of the year. 
because they came back and just blew me away because I enjoyed everything they did. But this, oh my god, why? It's the new Disturbed album, Evolution. Oh my gosh, that was actually gonna be my next pick. <laughs> really? <laughs> Like, oh my god, like, I loved Immortalized. Immortalized was my album of the year in 2015. Immortalized was what got me into Disturbed. And I kept that album on repeat during, like, my first year of uni. And I still have it on repeat. It's still a killer album. Those who say otherwise, y'all wrong. I mean, I saw a lot of people just give it bad reviews because, oh, it's Disturbed. But, like, did you hear that Sound of Silence cover? But here's the thing with the Sound of Silence cover. They're in Immortalized, everything was like just a normal sound with only one little thing for the sound of silence where it's a completely different sound but it still works. With Evolution, it's basically sound of silence all over again. Well, they're trying that and it Failing. didn't work. Yeah, it did not work at all. It's like you put so much time and effort into either sounding like really flat or just like suddenly loads of balance and it's like no, that, that's not what we signed up for here. And like the thing with Disturbed is with every single album, like yeah, they'll have a slower moment like every now and then, but there's always usually like a head banging track and stuff like that. I mean, even with like their debut, The Sickness. Ooh. Yes, there was that. <laughs> but even like outside of the singles and all that, there was still a lot of really good stuff. Like The thing is with Disturbed, like even if they don't have that good singles, you can always rely on the non-singles, those little diamonds in the rough in the albums. But here, there's none of that. Yeah, like, Are You Ready is probably the shining light in this album, and it's And even, even then, it's barely. It's barely even a rough. It, it's, it's bad. I mean, the, the, I can see that the band has now gone into a new direction, especially with um, David Drummond taking out his chin piercing, so now he looks like Phil Collins. Um, but, except he can't play the drums like that. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, again, we're not saying that band shouldn't go into a different direction. Like, we literally discussed this earlier. So, the fact that we kind of have to keep, you know, saying it again probably says a lot about how certain people view music. So, I mean, there are some bands that have, like, changed up their styles over the years, and still like them. I mean, Hailstorm. Yeah, they did new, that. Their new one this year was amazing. That was a good record, actually. Yeah, and you know what? I still really like um, like the fame and with confidence. And you know what? They still play the same pop punk and they, they're, they're still going and they're still great. So nothing of that. However, my final pick, um, well, to be honest, it was a little bit of a disappointment to me when the first single came out, but then I had a lot of hope going up. Uh, I know, then, I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, you remember how I said earlier about you could either die uh, by chemical romance or long li live long enough to see yourself become Fallout Boy? Yeah, Fallout Boy mania. It sucks. I 100% agree. Fuck this album. Like, I will give credit where credit is due. I really loved um, American Beauty, American Psycho. I will admit that. Like, all the stuff before the hiatus was good. Um. Save Rock and Roll, that's a bad album, but not the worst that they've done. There's a few good moments. I mean, the bass line in Where Does the Party Go, that's still a jam. Like, doom, ba -doom, boom, boo -doo -doo -doom, ba -doom. Yeah, you're talking to someone who isn't a Fall Boy fan, so let that say something. <laughs> but then again, it, I felt it picked up again with American Beauty, American Psycho, that even though there were a lot of like, little like, bloop, 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 bloop moments, it made for it. I mean, the last track, Twin Skeletons, that's like one of my favorite songs by Fall Out Boy. And that, that came out back, back in 2015. So when it came back and they had Young and Menace, I was like, uh, what, 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 what? Yeah, I remember, I remember hearing that for the first time, like in passing, and I'm like, what is this? Oh, it's the new Fall Out Boy song. Isn't it amazing? This is amazing to people. So here's the thing. They then went, because it was originally meant for 2017, that's when the single was released. Yeah, Then but... they went away and were like, oh, we're going to try and fix things. We understand your criticism, so we're going to try and fix it for you to make sure it's okay. But did they do it? No! No, it, because, like... Because Pete Wentz is in charge and he's a massive knobhead. Didn't we already know that? I know, but some people need that clarification. Yeah. 
See, the thing is, um, there is just nothing in Fall Out Boy that makes me feel that there's any genuine emotion for it. That there isn't anything, like, they truly want to write. That they truly feel like this is their life on a piece of manuscript. Because it all just seems so fake. It seems very disingenuous. And the thing is, there are some talented people in there beside Pete Wentz. And there's just a lot of people that can put together some good music some good production, but everything here is just all over the place. And I can't understand how and why people, like I even have some friends that'll be like, oh my gosh, this album is amazing. I'm like, do you want to get your ears checked? Do you? I mean, I can understand why some people would, you know, want to defend this because, oh, it's Fall Out Boy. I love this band, you know, da da da. And like, even though I'm not a Fall Out Boy fan at all, I can understand why people like Fall Out Boy. Because, you know, the earlier stuff, yeah, I can definitely see why people would be really into it. Once they rock and roll happened, any of that kind of just faded away from me. So I thought, okay, maybe Mania has like a little bit of hope. Yeah, Young Menace was bad, but oh boy. Um, yeah. yeah, I think the rest of the album, aside from Young Menace, is really difficult. I mean, yeah. it's like... Yeah, like, to me, when I first listened to it, it, you know the term, it bored me to tears? It did that, but to a stream of tears. It was that boring to me. I, I remember listening to it in the morning, trying to get dressed, and I was thinking, how am I not just shoving my head into a wall right now? Because you got to really think, with all these albums that we mentioned, there is time, there is effort that's put into it, there are producers that work on it and get paid for it, sound engineers who basically painstakingly try and make everything sound good. But there are people out in the world, like Pete Wentz, who are like, nah, let's mix this shit up and make sure that I, I, mean, that I, I mean, we sound great. Basically, to put it bluntly, Fall Out Boy officially sold out. I mean, as if we didn't know that already. Yeah, but this was just like that giant nail. I saying, mean, Save yep. Rock and Roll was when they sold out, but Mania is when they announced to the world that they've already sold out. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh dear. Like I said, you either die in my chemical romance, or live long enough to see yourself become Fall Out Boy. And unfortunately, Fall Out Boy keeping that, and Panic at the Disco have turned into Fall Out Boy. I think it was a good idea that my chem broke up when they did. Yeah. As much as we miss them, it's a good thing they did. Because we can bless their albums all the time and listen to Gerard Moy's new music. Exactly. Alright, so here's my last one, and... God, this actually really fucking hurts. Oh this, dear, what did you do? This, no, this one really does hurt, because... Okay, I'm just gonna say who it is. Um, it's Helix by Amaranth. And to me... Like, Amaranth is my all-time favorite band. Like, I love this band to death. Like, you have no idea. Like, their last album, Maximalism, I absolutely loved. And it came at number two on Album of the Year. Pretty much second to, well, Lake 182, which I have a poster for right there. But it was still a really good album. And, like, after the departure of Jake and all that, I thought, okay, so it might go in a different direction and everything. And, like, when... Jake did his project with Syra and all that, I knew, okay, there's gonna be a bit of a competition here. So, is Syra gonna win or is Amaranth gonna win? Let's just find out. You can already tell who I think won. Syra. I mean, I got to listen to this as soon as it came out, basically for like this one, because I know how much he loves Amaranth, and I did my own review of it. To be fair, I didn't think it was the worst thing I had heard because there's still some good things that are in Amaranth. I mean, they know how to play music and they know how to work together, but none of the lyrics made sense. I mean, I feel like that sort of started on Maximalism, and I feel like that was sort of the thing that kind of kept it from being number one. Some of the lyrics were definitely a little odd compared I wrote to... in my review about yeah. 365 with its chorus. Yeah, 365 had a weird chorus. It's a jam, course. but what is that chorus meant to mean? What is this song meant to mean? What is any of this meant to mean? Pretty much, yeah. But like, even with this album, like, to me, like, the lyrics are fine for what they are. Except on one track, god damn it. But like, to me, there's like, a few good songs, and then the rest, aside from one, are forgettable. And to me, that actually really hurts, because like I mentioned, they're my favorite band. So that's like driving a stake through my heart, and it really sucks. And pretty much, this album includes 
the worst fucking thing they've ever put out, which is the form of GG6. Oh my god, I hate, hate, hate that song. Henrik, you're a great screamer. I love you, dude. But what was that? Like, you literally ripped part of Rap God and put it into your song and reworded it a little bit. Like, I, I, like, like I said, Henrik, I love you, but you can do so much better. And like, the instrumentation on that, oh my god, it feels like, <laughs> and it feels like I was listening to, like, Stick Stickly by Attack Attack. Oh no, we don't need to have crap call again. <sighs> That's just the vibe it gave me, and normally I would like maybe laugh at that or something, but this is my favorite band. I'm not supposed to laugh at them. I'm supposed to, you know, love this and relish in it, but I can't. I just can't. And I tried, and I said to myself, like over and over, oh, this sounds great, this sounds great. But as time went by, I came to my senses, realized. It's not really that great, and again, that really fucking sucks. You're hurt by that your favorite album, that your favorite band disappointed you. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, those were just our choices for disappointing albums this year. It, what were albums that you were excited for, but really disappointed you? Or maybe there's like the flip side to that, that there were albums that you didn't expect much, but that you uh, listen to it, and now you're like absolutely in love with the band. Like, for example, what Disturbed uh, Immortalized did to me. Yeah, exactly. Because there could be that one album that really did it for you. I mean, I didn't listen to Under Oath before, and like, I listened to their new album, and I absolutely loved it. So, that's that. Was, that. that was the same with me with Hellstorm. I listened to Vicious, and Vicious blew my mind! Pretty much. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.